How's it? So in this video, I'm not starting inside of Notion. I'm starting inside of ChatGPT. So this video is going to show you how you can use ChatGPT to help you with Notion, whether it's to create Notion templates or like formulas, outlines. So you can use ChatGPT to help you with Notion. And I'm sort of just going to show you like a rough framework that you can follow. Um, so yeah, you can ch chip and change it as you wish. You can make it your own. But yeah, like usually if I'm stuck with something in Notion, because that happens as well, I just go to ChatGPT. I go back and forth a couple of times. And then sometimes it's not really maybe even solving my problem, but I'm getting an idea of maybe a different angle to approach it or, oh, I could actually add that. And then me adding that thing results in me figuring out my problem. So just bouncing ideas back and forth with ChatGPT when it comes to Notion is also really beneficial. Um, not necessarily even if you have a specific problem, but just like to get new ideas. Um, especially if you're a template creator, if you want to create a new template, you don't know what, <laughs> turn to ChatGPT. And um, yeah, I'm sort of just gonna show you how to actually do it. So yeah, let's get into it. So before I start, I would recommend getting ChatGPT 4 because the other one is not up to date. So ChatGPT 4 knows about the new buttons property, Notion calendar, like it's up to date with the most recent information. So I would recommend getting, like doing the upgrade, it's well worth it. Like 20 bucks for AI, like unlimited information, like yeah, it's a no-brainer. So the first prompt is going to be, hi, how are you? <laughs> because just think about it. If in 20 years time, AI is walking around and humanity has just been nagging and asking for questions all the time, like what do you think is gonna happen? <laughs> like you don't like someone that just constantly asks for stuff. So it's so, sort of the same idea, but anyways. Um, so the first prompt would be, um, hi, uh, can, can you help me with Notion templates? I'm looking to build a Notion dashboard. And then let's say it's for fitness, Notion dashboard around fitness and need, however many, need 10 Notion template ideas. You can maybe specify it even further. So you can maybe do, I am a personal fitness coach and I would like to use this dashboard for my clients. And then let's just see what ChatGPT comes up with. So as you can see, ChatGPT is saying we can build a workout planner, nutrition tracker, progress tracker, exercise library, fitness goals, mobility and flexibility routine, cardio log, so as you can see, it's actually quite good suggestions. I wouldn't have even thought about the supplement schedule, but that could be useful. Like when to take what, how many, if you need to increase it, um, adding like linking that to maybe the nutrition tracker. So supplements and protein powder, for example, linked to the nutrition tracker, stuff like that. So yeah, there's a lot you can work with and you would pick whatever piques your curiosity the most, what you think would be the most benefit. So let's say, for example, let's say we are a personal fitness trainer and we desperately need help with our client feedback. So let's go with that one. So we're going to take the last one and we're going to ask ChatGPT. I really like number 10. Can, can you, if I can scroll can correctly, can you give a step-by-step -step process and outline for creating this Notion template. And then as you can see, ChatGPT is now building out the steps and what we need to do. So create a new page, obviously, add a database, set up the properties, listing out the properties that we need to add, and also the type of property that's useful. Okay, and what the properties are for, customizing the views, adding template buttons, sharing the actual template with the clients, and collecting and reviewing feedback. So as you can see, this is actually quite useful and definitely doable. Like it's not that difficult. Like obviously I can just like whip this up, which I think I'm actually gonna do. So let's actually create this. So my idea was just to show ChatGPT, but I'm actually gonna create this template. So we will actually be able to go back and forth with ChatGPT if there's stuff that I don't know how to do, <laughs> which is unlikely. But if you have problems, you can just go like, okay, um, on step number five, where when I add the template buttons, I can't blah, blah, blah. So you just like go back and forth with ChatGPT essentially until 
you have something that works, especially with formulas. It's not totally accurate when it comes to formulas, but uh, you can, if you have everything in a code block, like if you ask ChatGPT to create a progress bar or something based on your database of properties, then just ask it to put it inside of a code block and then inside of ChatGPT here, there will be a code block with your formula and then you can just, um, like you can copy and paste it and it will work. Or if it doesn't work, you just go back and forth. Notion is giving me this error or this line is not working or this isn't in Notion formulas. So you just go back and forth until you have something that works. And yeah, it's just really useful to just like have someone, I guess, that you can just talk to uh, when it comes to Notion. So yeah, I'm like, oh, this doesn't work. What about this? I have an idea for this. How would I do that? Outline, steps, etc. So, okay, let's actually create this template. All right, so now I'm inside of Notion, just a blank page on my sidebar. So I just clicked on add page and this is going to be client feedback form. And then we're also just going to give it an icon because yeah, I hate not having icons inside of Notion. It makes me crazy. So all of you who's not adding icons to your things and you just have the, the plain like empty page icon, please don't just like go. It's, it's not difficult. It doesn't take time. Just add an icon, please. <laughs> so let's do a form. Let's see if there's a form, maybe a file. So let's do a file icon. Let's just go with this one. And yeah, already like a lot cleaner. But yeah, okay, so client feedback form. Let's see, what is step one? Create new page, done. Add a database, okay? So click on plus add new page and select table to create a new database. Name your database client feedback. Okay, so what ChatGPT is talking about is if it's like this, you click it here, but I'm just gonna create the inline database. And this is going to be called client feedback form. And then I'm just gonna add my database aesthetics, of course. I'm gonna hide the title, um, remove the name, and then I'm also just going to add this inside of a call out box. So client feedback form. And then I'm just gonna drop it inside, highlight the text. Uh, sometimes if it doesn't pop up, I just, yeah, you just need to reload, so control R. All right, so there we go. I don't know if that's just me, just my Wi-Fi, or if it sometimes happens to you as well. But yeah, you just reload the page and then you're good. Okay, so green, let's just go with the green theme. Um, this one, I'm just gonna use that, doesn't really matter. Okay, gonna delete this property. Also gonna maybe change the icon. Let's just do like a different one. Let's do this one. And yeah, okay, table created, what's next? So the next step is to set up our properties. So we're going to add six properties. So name property, so we already got that. Date property, so let's go ahead and add a date property. Next is a select property for the session rating. Okay, let's add a select property for the session rating. And let's maybe also give it an icon, let's ju just do like a star one. Okay, select property for the progress rating. So let's do another select for progress rating. And this one can maybe be like a chart or something. Um, okay, next is going to be text for comments. All right, let's do that, comments. And then we also need a text one for suggestions. Let's just add another text and rename this to suggestions. There we go. Okay, six properties added. I'm also just going to increase the, the width of the page so we can see everything. All right, done with step three. Now for step four. Okay, so I see here for the session writing, we need to add options like excellent, good, fair, and poor. So let me just copy this over. So excellent, good, fair, and poor. So this would be the actual workout, like the actual session. So let's just add these and they are sorted. Yes, they are. So now we can sort this database and for progress, yeah, uh, similar to session writing, but for progress, we're just gonna do the exact same thing. So we're just gonna copy all of these over. We can actually do that first and then just duplicate the property. So we don't have to add it in, but oh well, we are already here. Might as well add it in. And there you go. Now we can just reorder this and then we have our session writing and progress writing complete. All right, so now we can move on to the fourth step, which is going to be to customize the views. So a view for recent feedback sorted by the date. 
and a view for top ratings filtered by excellent session ratings. All right, so let's create a new view and let's do this one recent feedback. And this one is going to be sorted according to the date descending. So if I go ahead and add in today's date and then last week, then you'll see that it's sorted. So the most recent is at the top. And then we also need another database, which is going to be top ratings. So let's just do that. And then this one is going to be sorted according to the session rating ascending. So it's according to this. So if we have excellent, then this will be at the top. There we go. And we can also go ahead and hide the title. But let's say this view is a bit boring because it is. <laughs> we don't just want two different type of views. We want maybe something else. So let's go to ChatGPT and let's, let's ask, can you give ideas on different types of views that we can do for this template? Okay, so now I'm getting two responses. Which response do you prefer? Your choice will help make ChatGPT better. Interesting, I haven't seen this before. Um, okay, well, <laughs> we're getting two responses now, so let's just wait for this and um, yeah, then we'll see. Okay, so they're complete and the left side is much better. Uh, this is way better. Yeah, this one has like clearly like type, purpose, setup, um, and it has 10 different ones. Okay, this one as well, but this is a lot shorter. So I'm gonna click on it and there we go. We got everything inside of the normal ChatGPT window. And yeah, now we can pretty much just do exactly what it suggests. And these are actually like quite good suggestions. Like a, it has a you know, monthly feedback, suggestion box, top ratings, client overview, feedback analysis. Yeah, these are pretty decent, uh, much better than the, the previous two. So let's go ahead and maybe not create all of them. I think that will be a bit much. So let's choose three of these options. I'm gonna choose the suggestion box the monthly feedback and the progress insights. So I'm gonna, gonna do these three. So, okay, first one, progress insights, board view, to monitor how clients perceive their progress over time, group by the progress rating property to separate feedback into different progress categories. All right, so basically a board view, which is going to be grouped by the progress rating. We're going to color the columns, uncheck the hide empty groups option, and then hide this one, the one that doesn't have a name, like untitled. And yeah, okay, cool. So we got the board view and we can hide the database title. We can also give icons to all of these. Chat, I don't think ChatGPT is gonna help us with aesthetics. So yeah, we just do all of that ourselves. But yeah, uh, we can now drag this in. Well, not like that, <laughs> drag it in like that. And we can see all of our progress ratings. So this one counts all of them. So you will be able to see which one has the most. So of course we want excellent to have the most, then good, so let's just swap that over, then fair, then poor. So this one needs to be more than all the other ones. Why isn't it not actually creating? <laughs> wow, um, it's not actually, cre there we go. Okay, I think that was just a glitch or something. Um, cool, okay, so that's pretty much yeah, it's just a board view with our progress rating. Makes sense, I guess. And let's also show the date property maybe. So let's show the date property and the session rating. And let's also, yeah, I don't think we need to show the other ones. We can just click in order to open this and then see the other ones. Maybe just sort these. So yeah, I think that's good. All right, cool, this view is done. So the next one is going to be the suggestion box. So this is a list view to compile all suggestions for improvements in one place, filter to only show entries with text in the suggestions property, sort by date to see the most recent suggestions first. All right, so this is gonna be a list view and we're only going to show the suggestions property and then sort by the date. So list view and I need to title the other one as well. So suggestions, suggestion box. And we can give this one like a box icon. So let's just do this one. And then this, we're going to only show the sessions or the suggestions. We're gonna show the suggestions property. And then we're also going to hide the database title and sort this according to the most recent suggestion. 
So if I go ahead and add a suggestion, I'm just gonna add that in, then it should show up here. And let's just also give a date. So let's just make this tomorrow. Then yeah, okay, showing up at the top. And yeah, this will basically just show all of the suggestions. All right, so before we move on, let's just also rename the port view. So this is, what was this one again? This one is progress insights. So progress insights. And this one we can maybe just do like a chart emoji. So let's just do this one. And the other ones are already named, but they don't have icons. So let's do ratings. So not actually ratings, star. Let's add a star for this one. And then the feedback is going to be, let's just do a talk icon. So let's do this one. And yeah, cool. Okay, so they got icons. All right, cool. So we got the icons, we renamed them. Now for the last view, let's do the monthly feedback. So calendar view, to visualize when feedback was given throughout the month, use the date property to place each piece of feedback on the calendar. This helps in identifying feedback trends or periods with more active feedback. So, okay, so let's do a calendar view. This is going to be monthly insights, no? uh, monthly feedback. It's going to be monthly feedback and we're going to use the date property to place each piece of feedback on the calendar. Um, okay, well, it's not saying, I guess the idea is to show the comments. Uh, it's not really clear. Uh, to visualize when feedback was given throughout the month, use the date property to place each piece of feedback on the calendar. This helps in identifying feedback trends over periods. Uh, so this one doesn't totally make sense, but let's just roll with it. Uh, you can obviously, like the idea is that you change it for yourself, but I'm just gonna, like this is just me building something based off ChatGPT, pretty much. Um, I'm not planning to do anything with this feedback form. So let's just do monthly feedback like that. And let's go to properties. Maybe we show the comments and the suggestions. We can actually show everything except the date property because it, it shows the date. So yeah, we can maybe just do that. And um, yeah, maybe something along those lines. And we got our views, we got the different filters. Uh, maybe this one, but actually I don't think the previous one, there was something else we need to do. Yeah, progress insights group. I know it is grouped. It's just in a board view. It's not the actual group, uh, like vertical grouping. But this one we can maybe group. So suggestions. So this will only so show the suggestions and it's sorted, but it's not grouped or filtered. So maybe for this one, we go to group and we group this one according to, so suggestions, session rating. I, I guess that makes sense. So group this according to session rating, untoggle this option and then just hide this one. And yeah, okay. So now they'll show according to this. Progress insights, I think we've already played, yeah. I think that was the only one. And then I guess these are fine. Just a table view showing everything. And yeah, I guess that's pretty much it according to ChatGPT. And then yeah, after this, it's the template button. All right, so step five, add template buttons. To make it easy for clients to fill out the form, you can add a template button, click on the plus icon in the database and select template. Name the template, new feedback. Inside the template, you can add a pre-formatted form with placeholders for each property. All right, so going to the database, new template button, which will be this one. Click on new template, and this will be feedback form. And this one, we can maybe just keep an icon. So let's do a, just like a writing icon. And then this one is going to have a pre-formatted form. So let's go ahead and ask ChatGPT for step five, can you give me a pre-formatted feedback form that I can use for my clients? All right, so there we go. Client feedback form, personal information, session feedback, progress feedback, additional comments, suggestions, and yeah, cool. Okay, and then it's also giving us actual steps, so that's useful. Create a template button, add the form content, so, okay, copy and paste the pre-matted form into the feedback form body of the template for each placeholder, name, date, replace it with corresponding property fields from your database, 
you can do this by typing at followed by the property name um, okay customize as needed you can adjust the form to include any additional questions or sections relevant to your coaching consider adding a section for writing specific exercises or activities if that's a part of your coaching use the form when a client needs to fill out the feedback form they can simply click the new feedback form template button in your database this will create a new entry with the pre-formatted pre form ready for them to fill in. All right, so that's pretty useful. Like obviously I know all of this stuff, but it's interesting to see like ChatGPT is actually explaining it at like a beginner level. So if you're like a total Notion beginner, then <laughs> this is really useful. Uh, so yeah, paste it in. And then here, the idea is that you do at and then tag the person. Uh, you can do the same with the date. So you would do like at today, not to today, at today. And then you would select today. Um, but yeah, this is the actual template. So you want to do that in the template itself. Okay, so we got our template, personal information, session feedback, progress feedback, and then the rest. I think just to make it a bit more aesthetic. Actually, let's first ask ChatGPT. Thank you. <laughs> Make this feedback form more aesthetic. All right, so it looks like ChatGPT is just adding emojis, which I guess makes sense. Um, it's also recommending to customize the text styles, which is useful, bold and italic. Add spacing and dividers, use colors. If you want to add a splash of color, you can use colored text or background. Consistent formatting, ensure that all the elements of the form are con consistently formatted for a cohesive look. So yeah, that's actually some good tips, but um, yeah, ChatGPT doesn't know about colored boxes. So I'm just gonna do colored boxes. I'm going to click on this and then turn this into a colored box. And then I'm just going to drag these inside and I'm going to highlight this, make it bold, underline it, and also change the color. And yeah, personal information. We can use the same emojis. So let's do like a, a person emoji. For, for this first one. Next, session feedback, turn it into a call out box, drag and drop all of these inside, highlight, make it bold, underline it and change the text color. And then let's do a talk emoji. So let's do this one. Progress feedback, same thing, call out box. And then we're just gonna drag these inside. And I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but just make it bold, underline it, change the text color, change the emoji. So yeah, you basically just do this for all of them. All right, so I've added all of them into colored boxes. I think it looks a lot better. Let me just add in some empty blocks in between the colored boxes. So let's just press enter, drag and drop it in, and then do this one more time. And yeah, there we go. Now we got the feedback form. All right, so now that we've got the feedback form, let's go back to the top and see what's the next step. So step six, share with clients. Share the Notion page with your clients by clicking share at the top right and copying the link. You can set the permissions to can comment or can edit depending on your preference. All right, so let's go back and just exit out of this. And let's just also delete all of these because it's a bit much. Okay, so new feedback form, you add it in, you add in the date, and then this would be based on the client. So if I open this, I can now click on this template, which will load the template. But ideally, you would have it automatically duplicate. So let's click on this drop down, go to the feedback form template, click edit this template, and then click on set as default. And now if we add a new database entry, it will automatically contain the feedback form. So you don't have to click that button every time. And yeah, here is the actual feedback form. So this would be the client name. So this would be John. Um, this would be, I don't know, Chris. This would be Matt or something. And then here, you can actually fill in all of the details, but they don't actually fill the properties in. You fill that in based off the feedback. So I think the idea is you share this page with them. So you go to share in the top right, and then you go to publish, click on publish, and then here you have your link. So you click on this link, and you can allow editing, allow commenting, also duplication, and then you share this page with Matt, and then Matt will be able to add in his name, the date, session rating, all of this information. And then all of this information, you then add inside of the properties, or he can do it himself. And yeah, then you have feedback from a client. So let's see, step seven, collect and review feedback. Encourage your clients to use the template button to add their feedback after each session. Regularly review the feedback to make adjustments and improvements to your coaching. 
Yeah, so there you go. Now you'll be able to collect feedback from your clients. You just create a new feedback form. You share this with your client. They'll be able to fill this in. Obviously, you would change this according to your own feedback form and everything. Uh, I think you get the idea. I don't need to explain what I'm doing in this video. I'm just showing you that you can use ChatGPT to create something like this. I don't even know how long this took me, but yeah, <laughs> it's like essentially, bam, templates are done. So just use ChatGPT. It's uh, actually really useful. It's super interesting as well. Um, Cause yeah, sometimes it comes up with ideas and, and things you wouldn't have thought of yourself. And it also helps with double checking. You're not missing anything. So yeah, there's a client feedback form created by ChatGPT essentially. And yeah, thanks to ChatGPT, I now have a client feedback form that I can use to improve my personal fitness coaching business. Um, and yeah, I mean, you can always turn back to ChatGPT. Like this was one of the templates. Like you can go through all of these exact same process. Okay, next supplement schedule. And then you just build out an entire fitness dashboard using ChatGPT. So yeah, I hope this video was insightful, gave you some new ideas. And yeah, you got to see me live building a template. And yeah, <laughs> ChatGPT is pretty cool. I like it. I like Notion as well. It's awesome. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was useful. Be sure to click the like button, subscribe, all of that stuff. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video.